Wow, all I have to say is this is one of the craziest chapters. I know I said that for about every single chapter review, but this is finally the moment to wear Boruto finally loses it all. I can't believe that this is one of the greatest cases of identity theft in all of anime because Kawaki straight up stole Boruto's whole flow, his whole identity, and is now Kawaki Uzumaki, technically. This whole chapter in general was crazy. A lot of our theories that we've been coming up with over the past couple of months kind of are true in this case. Things as in Ada's involvement in the story, Boruto going rogue, everyone turning against Boruto, and you know, things of that nature is kind of true in this case. But with this chapter is really weird because once Ada did the big thing to where she used her powers to influence the world, it sort of flip flopped everything to where, okay, nothing physically changed, but everyone's memories and everything like that thinks that Boruto is the bad guy and that Kawaki is the good person. But the weird thing about this is, is that Ada did not mean to do this. Ada cannot actually control this power that she has. So essentially, there is a thing called omnipotence, it's a Shin Jutsu, and it essentially makes the will to make anything real. And the way her charm ability is, is that her desires are made real by this omnipotence. So it's a very broken ability, and I don't think Amato had any clue about this, or maybe it did, I'm not sure yet, but this ability just completely changed the whole scope of the Boruto manga. And honestly, at first glance, I actually did not like this at all. I thought it was sort of a way to get around certain things and change up the story, but I think for now it's okay. I'll kind of see how it plays out. I, I think that the way the story is going could be interesting with Boruto being rogue. I didn't really want it to be similar to how it was in part one of Naruto with someone being chased after and, and the other person would be Kawaki or Boruto chasing after them. But hey, this could be entirely different with the way they set up the story and it might actually be a good thing that Boruto is now on the opposite side of things. But yeah, essentially, you know, the reason to why this happened was Kawaki was just expressing his feelings towards Ada and saying that he wishes that Boruto was a nobody, right? Because if Boruto was this random guy who Momoshiki decided to place his karma on, then things would be a lot different, right? Who really cares if random ninja 2 gets killed or something like that if Momoshiki is inside of him? But this makes it a lot more different when the son of the Hokage is literally carrying Momoshiki. Kawaki killing him will make his life a thousand times worse and he would never be invited back into the village. So not that Kawaki meant to ask Ada to change around his life, but it just so happened that for some reason she started floating and changed the whole entire world. And the thing is, Kawaki is now taking advantage of this, which makes it even worse. And he recognizes what he's doing and is taking advantage of this to say that, hey, Naruto's not missing. Boruto actually killed him. So he's taking advantage of the fact that Ada is able to charm the whole entire world to think that Boruto's the one that killed. Naruto. Now, if this ability can make anything real, will other people be able to break it? Because I'm thinking someone like Sasuke, right? He's known Naruto's whole life, and then he's chasing this character called Boruto. Aren't things going to start not aligning correctly? I mean, it really didn't align correctly when those ninja first showed up, and they said that Kawaki's scar healed up kind of fast. I would think that Sasuke, Shikamaru, and the others that were there during that whole thing would also look at Boruto and be like, how did you get a scar on your eye? Because it was actually Kawaki that got the scar. So I'm not sure if things are going to be lining up exactly once the other characters start having interactions with Borza, but it seems that for now they're going to be kind of under this charm and I think that they'll kind of ignore those subtleties just for now but you know things like Borza has whiskers he looks oddly similar to Naruto I just think that from an outside perspective looking in it's a little bit apparent that maybe this Boruto guy isn't the outsider, but I don't know, maybe we're looking too deep into the things. One other thing that I wanted to point out with this whole situation is that Momoshiki actually pointed out that you know, Susuke who became a god may have manipulated humankind's memories before. I think he may be talking about Kaguya back in Naruto, or I think he may be talking about somebody else, but I imagine this might be a throwback to Naruto Shippuden, or maybe even further back from that. So slight little hint from Momoshiki saying that this might not even be the first time that this has happened before. It also makes you think that if Ada has the ability to do this, then what does Damon have the ability to do, right? So things are going to get way out of hand once that happens. But let's move on to the other parts of the chapter. One other thing, which I guessed correctly, was that Amado actually had a code for Kawaki, which was shut him down. I figured he had this because why would Amado 
give Kawhi get a karma back and not have some sort of fail safe to shut him down. I think this was done for all his cyborgs. If you look at some of the other videos where we talked about this, he has these codes just in case something happens. So in the event that Ada never did this and Amato was present, Amato could simply shut him down if he wants to, right? And Amato is kind of using this as leverage towards Shikamaru saying, hey, I could actually shut him down if you guys don't kill him. And of course, I'm talking about before the whole thing with Ada happened. So, you know, Mato did seem very worried that they were even chasing after him in the first place, but I wonder how Mato's intentions are going to flip after this whole thing. Also, Sarada is unaffected by this ability, which is very interesting. What makes Sarada special is that she's half Uchiha, but that's really about it. I don't know what else can make Sarada immune to this? Maybe it's the fact that her relationship with Boruto is a little bit different. I know Samere and Sarada were immune to Ada's ability. I'm not sure if Samere is immune to it right now. It seems like Momoshiki was only able to tell who was immune to it based on the proximity to them because of Sarada's right there. So there could be someone else like Samere who is immune to it. And, you know, it does make you wonder why Sarada in particular. I think Sarada's got a very important role moving forward in the story, possibly having to run away with Boruto or being the one that has to convince or break these people out of this, I guess, Genjutsu, if you want to call it that, and help them to realize that Boruto is not the one who's done all this. But if you look at, you know, the first episode of Boruto and with how Kawaki is all, you know, nice clothes, got the whole outfit out and Boruto seems like he's really damaged, got on the same clothes, hasn't really changed that much. I imagine at some point in the story, Kawaki's still gonna be like this, even post time skip, having everyone on his side, and Boruto is gonna somehow find a way to convince Sasuke to be on his side. But yeah, it seems like all the scenes in chapter 75 are finally coming to where Boruto had that vision and he saw someone being attacked, which looks like it's him. He will eventually run into Shikadai, it seems as well, but there's also a Kawaki panel where it shows Kawaki sort of looking down. I'm not sure to what that could be pointing to, but it seems like he's going to run into Kawaki again so yeah this chapter was very crazy this chapter is going to change the whole playing field of the Boruto story and it can honestly go anywhere from here I hope they don't like change up too much with Ada's ability and doesn't try to change too much of the past but it seems like Kishimoto honestly knows what he's doing and I think he's doing a great job with the story right now anyways let me know what you guys think about the chapter do you guys think that this may be where the Jogan is coming in due to these recent events and who do you think Boruto is going to run into while he's running away from this. Also, what is your opinion on this whole Ada's omnipotent ability? Do you think it's too broken? Do you think it ruins the stories? Let me know. Me personally, I'm still going to wait maybe one or two more chapters before I have a real take on it. But as of now, it seems like it's okay and I'm perfectly fine with the way it's going right now. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and join the Discord and I'll see you later. Peace. Sing. 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 Sing.